Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Hey, I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is this Rogue is a gift. Pope. Rogue Pope from Todd Cooper. Todd Cooper, you make gifts it. Bastards. Fight. Now I hesitate to say this. Hoog. I sort of hesitate to say this, but okay. Todd, have you ever seen the video about Todd's? I'm a modern pope. By uh, jo by George, uh, what's the famous comedian? George, George Carlin. Uh, George Carlin. <laughs> it's like half now, of them. I know. I couldn't remember the word Carlin. <laughs> anyway, he did a whole bit on Todd's. You might you might want to go watch. <laughs> Stop wrong with Todd. I'm just hassling him. I have good friends named Todd. <laughs> yeah, you do. My brother's like uh, Shih Tzu. He's named Todd. Oh, wow. Not Rex. <laughs> All right. So this is Pogue. This is actually a um. Master Select, it's a Kentucky distillery, yeah. and it's one that's like way the heck out there on the trail. It's a significant drive from all the other distilleries. Sure. And they revived this story that goes back to the 1800s, and, but they are legitimately doing small batch, like 50 barrel production a year, mm -hmm. Kentucky whiskey. There's a perfuminess to that honey floral nose. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I feel like Old Pogue would understand what it's like to be on the Texas Whiskey Trail because all of our stories are so spread out right. by them being so far on the outside edge. I'm, all I'm getting is perfume honey, like but like a botanical perfume honey. Yeah, it's, it's nice on the nose. So it is probably one of the more perfumey bourbons I've had in a while. Not fruity like an Eagle Rare, but actually no. perfumey. Perfumey. Perfumey floral, yeah. Yeah, it's a straight bourbon and no age statement, so I'm guessing over four years old. This one is batch 6791. That's lovely. I'm saying 40s for the proof. What is that, low 40s? 43. 45.5. 45.5. Oh, it's I was actually, 43. actually goes down a little bit smoother than you'd expect. There's a lingering heat, but it could be this is just the first whiskey I've had today. Yeah, I'm not getting the heat. I had some wine at lunch. Ah. So I'm acclimated to a little bit of alcohol. There's no heat. For, well, finally, finally, after several seconds. Yeah. You get a slight, slight... In the chest. No. I'm getting a slight barrel note. It's just a thin... One moment. I'm going back. Thin layer of the barrel bitter. It's not overwhelming at all. It's just nice after that perfuminess to uh, end up with some just barrel presence right oh, yeah. on the end there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's nice. It's not all leaning towards the sweet, friendly, hey, how you doing? No, this is a... Uh... This is a meaty bourbon in the sense of it's a little thin, mm -hmm. but it's not like boring thin. It's just doesn't have a big molasses, deep brown sugar middle. Yeah. It's got all of the corn and grass and the barrel impact. Not a little bit of honey. Yeah. It's not like one of these voluptuous, rich, just the flavors falling over themselves, but it's not pouring, really launching out of the glass, but no, it's not anywhere near budget then. No, no, this is nice. Yeah, the this 40, is well done. The forty-five, there's enough there for you to get some uh, some nice notes, some nice elements, some nice flavors. I take that one. All of them sweet, except for that eventual final little tannin element, tannic element from the barrel. Okay, set that glass aside so you can come back to it. I'm gonna get one more set. Okay, We've got Paul Cruz. I bought a bottle of five hundred dollar Rock Rockford Rod for single malt number sixteen of twenty six. It's a sixty five percent. Whiskey. Taste of burnt toffee and honey to share with my friends. They complain it's too strong. I need new friends. Yes. And so there was a reply underneath that from, yes. from Jim, uh, Jimmy Leg. Jimmy Leg. <laughs> You're spending too much money on whiskey <laughs> and you need new friends. Hi, my name is Jimmy. I love cast drink whiskey and I'm kind of friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I, love how, I love how simultaneously one of the guys got Jimmy to reply with right. the typical Jimmy reply, right. immediately followed by a hey. hey. How you doing? Hey. <laughs> A little wink, wink, nod, nod. Like <laughs> Jimmy Leg is uh, quite the little mooch. I know. <laughs> okay, this one might be free. Read that one. This is another one from Garrett Rain. Garrett Rain. Rain. <laughs> I like how we both landed on I know. the same beat immediately. You had that's to. The, that's the Garrett. Well, you know beat. what? We never did that. The first four bottles he sent. Did it was know? just this one. Okay. It popped in our heads that Garrett Rain rhymes with purple oh. rain. Oh. Uh, this is a four grain bourbon from Bluebird Distillery. Me likey. Oh, there it is. No, no, hold on. Hold on. It's more developed. It is. It's more developed. It's the head fake. It's the no, head it's, fake. It, this is the first time ever. So, you know, normally you say leather and I say green. Well, hold on. 
I, I always have to characterize New it leather. because there's like mature, worn in oil. Nice leather. This yeah. is like, r like almost raw. Well, wait, I'm just saying this. I'm just saying typically you say leather, I say green right. when we're talking about this one note. Right. This one takes me over to your side. Oh, yeah. This one goes from green into the smell of a leather shop. Yeah, yeah. Like, like and not just any leather shop. A tourist shop. What? Like, remember when you go to those at the bottom of the parks? Yeah. And you can buy, like, a whip or a billfold or, you know, things like that. Or a, a handle yeah. you know, a carrying thing for your axe. Yeah, exactly. That, that no one ever Now you have to buy an axe, too. Yeah. To go with it. But smell that. So And that's what it smells like. The leather section of an Old West store. But this is a nice presentation of that note. This is much mm -hmm. more developed than the one that's just a little bit too astringent well, and, and funky and weird. This is a nice developed version of that, like a little bit more broken in leather. I feel like what you're saying, what, and what I agree with, and maybe this will, maybe you'll agree with this, is that it takes that note and owns it and develops it instead yes. of that note being an accidental byproduct of aging. I would say yes. It okay. feels like it's an intentional, really nice developed, mature note as opposed to, whoa, that got funky and weird. Now with some air, it's turning more into brown sugar and vanillas. There's a nice oakiness, a nice oakiness, a little bit of molasses. I'm not getting a honey. I'm not getting... This is another Pennsylvania whiskey. Oh, Pennsylvania. Now this is... Weren't they bringing the heat with some like yeah, nice, surprisingly yeah. nice whiskey? Corn, red wheat, rye, and malted barley. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, that's real nice. It's, um, it's weirdly thin before it kind of spikes just gently. You know what this is? Hmm. These are flavors that I've had in some whiskeys before. They're rare and they're lovely and they're they're dense and they're rich. But every other time I've had these flavors, I think it's been at a higher proof. Mm. What's the proof on this? 46. 46. Okay, I think I've had these flavors at like more cast strength whiskeys. Right. It's like, oh, that's really familiar, nice. And I wrote, wait a minute. There's usually a little bit more heft here. A little bit more gravity, a little yeah. bit more trying to trying to smack you around. A no, little there's bit. not. This, this one's just, gentle. No, but but at the same time, you see what I mean? Where they feel mm -hmm. it. I'm gonna use the word again. Developed and rich, but it doesn't get too hot with the proof. Yeah, it's super nice. Yeah, I still prefer the Pogue. If I'm having to pick between these two, and I'm saying molasses on top of an oak, and uh, then there's that rich, you know, uh, worn in leather. Yeah, I totally. And, uh, yeah, a little bit of vanilla mixed in there. A little bit of black tea, too. You know what, the, you know what that, that oakiness is almost like the kind of the, the squeeze in the tea bag? Yeah, that bitterness, that the tea goes from nice to slightly bitter aftertaste. But, but it doesn't get too bitter. Mm -mm. Super nice. Okay, we got Dreaming Wolf 8382. So, I get that I can't legally, privately, just still at home, but could I feasibly buy a barrel from someplace like Wyoming whiskey and have it shipped to Texas so that I could blend with other... Blend with other whiskey without licenses and permits, or would I have to pay you magnificent bastards to do it for me? Well, you have to pay that? somebody to do it for you. <laughs> you cannot purchase whiskey that's not in a bottle right. unless you have a license. So, But you can do, hold on, there is this thing called barrel picks and private barrel selects, and you can go and actually choose the barrel. The thing but you're is, buying whiskey in the bottle. Yeah, you're not going to be able to back up a truck and put a barrel on the back of a truck. That's the thing. Can't, Wouldn't that be nice? It has to go get in the bottles. And so yeah, when you're doing a barrel pick, you end up paying a retailer for the finished bottles. Yeah. That's what happens. You may pick your barrel here, but you're going to pay for it still at retail. Okay. All right. Yeah, rock I and really, roll. I really like uh, Pennsylvania is becoming, Yeah. you know what? Uh, a meaningful destination Let's for whiskey. Let's go hang out in Pennsylvania. I know, I know. There's some surprisingly nice things coming out of there right now. Okay, here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.